Well, today we're going to be in the book of 1 Peter. The title of the message today, what I want to share with you, is Knowing God in Color. Mm. Knowing God yeah. in Color. There's a song, you know how I love music. There's an old country song. How many stories start with that sentence? <laughs> and it's called In Color. The song is about this guy, and he sings a song, and he's talking to his grandpa. He's a little kid. And he says, he sees a picture on Grandpa's shelf. And he says, Grandpa, what's this picture here? And the picture is a beautiful song. And he said, uh, that's a picture of me and my brother. And in the middle of the Depression, they were little boys. He tells his grandson, he says, I believe it's his grandson. He says, if it looks like we were scared to death, you should have seen it in color. I love that. But after he says, that's me and uh, Uncle Jack, I think is the guy's name in the song. Well, the next picture that he has there, he says, uh, this is me and my partner in World War II. And again, it's a black and white picture. And he says the same thing. If it looks like we were scared to death, it's a picture of his partner in the army or the service or whatever it is. And he said, he should have seen it in color. What's he saying? I know the picture is one thing, but boy, there was a lot going on over there. There was a lot going on in the middle of the depression. And then the last one, I get a little emotional, I don't know why. But the last one, he says, it's a picture of him and his wife, who at the time of the song had passed away. Black and white picture, me and your grandma. And the same thing. You should have seen it in color. And the song today is about how many times we see God rather than the vibrant life-giving force he is for us we carry this little black and white picture around with us this is my picture of god and it's in a photo album somewhere and i don't think god wants it to be that way i think god wants it to be vibrant so that's a picture believe it or not me with hair on the right and a beautiful patty on the left and the one on the left is uh the left the picture on the left, of course, is black and white. When I see that picture, there's a million things that run through my head. Patty loves black and white pictures. I like color pictures. And to me, the picture in color just says so much more. My point as we get into the word this morning is I want to know God in color. That's right. I don't want to just talk to him when I come in here on Sunday. That's right. Or when I'm listening to a song or a message, I listen to a lot of messages. I want to know God. I want to be right there with Him. I want to be Moses at the burning bush, kneeling down before Him and experiencing everything that He has for me. Amen? I want to know Him in color. Amen. Alive and in color. That's what we want it to be. There's a twofold calling that God has on our life. One is a general calling. I don't know if you're a believer here today. I don't know all of you, but I would guess we all have believed a little bit in the Lord. And that's a general calling. We're a believer. We're a disciple. God, at some point in my life, said, Donnie, come on. And I say, God, I'm not good enough. Just leave me alone. Go find somebody better. He picks me up by the ear, and he drags me in. And uh, I'm very hard-headed as a person. And God knows that, and he knows he needs to kick me in the high knees sometime. So that's what he did. Don't you have a calling on your life for something, right? And I just want you to come in, and I want you to receive my salvation. And then there's another calling on our life that is a specific calling. Yes. Something yes. that's just you. Yes. Whatever yes. your talent is, yes. if you have no talent, God has something he wants you to use your life for. And it's a specific thing. And if you don't know that yet, get on your knees, ask God, God, what do you want me to use in my life to benefit your kingdom? And that's your specific calling. When God speaks to us, it's an earth-shaking thing. It's an emotional thing, a passionate thing, right? You feel something in your bones, and we know that it's God. Now, I, I have noticed that when I'm not listening to God, he might be speaking, but I'm not hearing him unless I identify that he's speaking to me. You have to have dreams. As a church, we have to have a dream rather than saying, let's just meet here every Sunday. We'll see all of our friends and then we'll go home and eat lunch. There has to be something bigger than that. And that is God's uh, 
anointing on our life. He's chosen us to be something special. God's favor. And we're going to touch on that this morning. God's favor. I have to know, the Bible says, not only do I have to believe, we have to do that to be in God's salvation, but I have to believe that he rewards those who diligently seek him. So when I come into his life, I have to know not only that I am God's child, but the Bible teaches us that we're in his favor. He's on my side regardless of what we're going through, what I'm going through, and what you're going through. Because I know we're going through stuff. As I get to know you and you get to know me, I'm a very open book. And sometimes I know things about you that are real, right? We can't come in here and act like, oh, I'm a tip towing through the tulips today like every other day well life doesn't work that way sometimes and yet god says even in those places i am with you first peter chapter two and peter is writing to encourage believers in his day this is in the 60s a.d right this is about 30 years after jesus was crucified and christians are being persecuted like never before and peter is writing to those people trying to encourage them in the middle of that persecution. And he's saying in chapter two, of uh, the things that we're gonna talk about today, is remember the darkness where you came from. Now I wish we had time today to go to every single person in this room. Again, I know some of you, I don't know some of you. And you can say, God took me from this place and brought me to this place. That's what the scripture we're going to read in just a second is talk partially talking about. Remember where God has brought you from when you're facing persecution. And then he's going to tell them to recognize the light that is in your life. And the last thing is that you have God's favor. So the first thing today is out of the darkness. So we're in 1 Peter chapter 2 and in verse 9. But you are a chosen generation. You feel chosen? Amen. Eh. Come on. I never really faced this when I was younger. But you know the illustration that they usually say when you play sports. Oh yeah, I was always the last one picked. Well, that, it's not a good feeling, is it? Now, that's not the case here today. God chose you specifically. Isn't that awesome? Now he chose us all generally in some way. But he chose you specifically. When you have felt the least significant, the least I matter in life, the least I have success in my life, I'm not worth anything. When you are in that spot, God came into where you are and said, I want you. Right. I choose you. Right. To somebody with my mentality, that means everything. It makes me feel special. It makes me feel like I matter. I love that. Yeah. But you are a chosen people chosen generation a royal priesthood and a holy nation when the, this scripture tells us that we're a holy nation we should just stand up and cheer god because of that he's brought us to a new place in our life that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you and here it is out of the darkness and into his marvelous light i like the illustration somebody used one time and he just had chairs lined up. And I think I actually shared it here before. And he had two chairs, two chairs, two chairs. And he was talking about how we're walking through life casually. This is Donnie casually walking. <laughs> and God touches us. We receive God's message. We're walking down this way. He picks us up. That's the darkness. He turns us around. And he Amen. gives us his life. Amen. And after he gives us his life, there's no Disney fairy tale going on here. There's chairs, there's obstacles in the way. And this guy, and he just simply illustrated that as things get in the way, I'm moving that thing and I'm keeping my eyes on the light that is God. And then I'm moving the next chair out of the way, dealing with obstacles in my life, whatever it is, no matter how serious, and keeping my eyes on God after I have been turned around. Yeah. Out of the darkness and into the light. And the reason he wants to do it is to shine his favor on us. Right. He wants to make a difference in our life. If you're like me, uh, most of you know I was forced to retire about 
two and a half years ago or something like that, two years ago. I didn't want to retire. I still don't want to be retired. As I go through that process, I'm going from one thing to another, from darkness to light, moving on to what God has next for me and everything that's going on. But I have to be in his favor. I have to be able to look up and say, okay, this isn't what I want to do, but what does God have for me now? What has he called me to do? And that's where I want to be. I want to be in his favor. I have to realize that that's what he wants. So if I'm in a place I don't want to be, if I'm not able to be spiritually significant in that place, I want to look for where God's place of favor is because I know he has that in my life. So we've come out of that darkness. And again, like verse 9 says at the end there, into his marvelous light. You know, a lot of times uh, we get we get a little proud, we get a little self secure, and uh, we think I'm I think I'm walking in my light sometime when it's His light, and I got to make sure that His light is on me and it's His light that I am walking in. I like what Matthew five fourteen says. I think something we're all familiar with. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. The Lord tells us to let our light shine. So we get in there. We got that little light inside of us. We're hesitant because we know we're still sinners. We're hesitant to go in the world and put light in somebody else's life where there's darkness. It's much easier to talk and to share with people who are like us. People, and maybe you're not like this. That's okay. But people who are under the blood, like the song sang this morning, people who have been saved, it's easy to have that Jesus conversation with them. Amen. But what is more fun, more challenging, and more interesting is meeting somebody, knowing somebody that doesn't have that light and is living in darkness when it comes to knowing God. God wants me to be able to, not out of arrogance or anything like that, to be able to come into that life, life let God's life come into my life and shine into their life. Whatever good I can put in that darkness, that's what God wants me to do. You are the light of the world. And then in John 8, 12, it says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. There's a little sharing going on, right? God's light coming into our life. And when it comes to this chosen thing that we talked about a minute ago, it's not God did choose us. That is most important, of course. And yet I also chose him. Because I could have said, and you could have said, no, thank you, God. I like what the world has to offer me better. I don't know how we could do that, but people do do that. Yeah, the world's given me a better offer, God, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that offer. But hopefully we chose to say, Lord, come in and receive that light. It changes the way we live. There's a guy on the radio. I don't always listen to him, but he's a great preacher. Uh, his name is Tony Evans. But I like this illustration that he shared. He said when he's driving down the freeway and he sees a car that might be painted black and white behind him. And he says all of a sudden... He's able to follow the rules better because there's a police car right behind him. When it comes to God, you know where I'm going with this, right? When I'm close to God, it's, he's not like a cop in that he's going to hit me with a stick and write me a ticket. But when I'm close to God, I realize how I'm living. I realize what's going on and I live in his lane that he has prepared for me. Remember, I'm living in his favor, and he's trying to get me in that spot where it's a sweet spot for me. And I want to ask you this morning, and I'll ask you again in a minute. Are you living in God's favor? Are you just living in belief? Mm -hmm. Belief is no small thing. I'm not saying that. Belief is everything. We have to believe, the Bible says, in order to be saved. But God has another threshold in our life. That he wants us not only to live in that salvation, but to live in his favor. He has a blessed place for us. The last thing this morning is this. Walking in the favor of God. So we're going to read verse 10 now. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Isn't that awesome? We should all have a t-shirt on this morning. 
I am, am a child of God. Amen. We are the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Earlier I talked about a country song, In Color. And now, in the closing here, I'm going to talk about another song. This is a Motown song. And uh, The Temptations. I love The Temptations. And their most famous song is probably a song called My Girl. You know that one? Even the way I sing it, you were able to recognize it. <laughs> and my point to share this song is, he says, talking about his girl, he's got sunshine on what? On a cloudy day. I am so tempted to sing right now. And uh, I, will not, I will not do that to you. I've got no, okay. We know about those cloudy days in that song, right? He's saying he's not just talking about regular kind of love. He's talking about love in his life that when things are wrong and bad and hurting, in the middle of those cloudy days, he says, I got this sunshine over here. Right. And God is on a higher level the same way, right? And when we go through something negative, all of us go through those kind of things. Our goal, our purpose as a church is to wrap our arms around each other, hug each other and say, we're going to get through this thing together by God's grace and by his right. favor. We have to know God in a very close way. I have a few principles in my life. They're kind of silly people principles, but this is principle number one. Okay. Some people talk negatively about everybody all the time. Do you know anybody like that? I definitely do. They're everywhere. And sometimes it's me. I don't want to just put other people down. And if they talk bad about everybody to you, this is my principle, they probably talk about you, bad about you to everybody. Donnie, what's up? Did you see a homeboy over here? Did you see this lady over here? Did you know this was happening and that was happening and that and this? And usually the information is about 50% correct or accurate. So I try to stay away from that stuff, but I know when I'm hearing that, no, I don't know it because I'm not hearing them say it, but I believe that when they're not around me, possibly they might be saying, what is up with that guy? <laughs> and I can understand why somebody would say that, to be honest with you. Um, but that's the way it goes, right? That's the way it goes in life. If you want to know about me, who do you talk to? You talk to that pretty lady right over there. Because she knows me better than anybody does. When it comes to Patty, she knows me in color. It's not the person speaking today. Not the person who shakes your hand, who who reaches out to you on your birthday. All those things are good. I love doing those things. But there's somebody deeper than that, right? There's a different person than that in reality. And Patty knows who that person is because she knows me in color. We know each other in color. Now that might not be a positive color. That might be like dark blue or something. And Patty wants more yellow, orange, and red in my life. But uh, but we want to see it. We want to see it in color. Amen. When I know God like Patty knows me, I can share His light in my life. I can share the darkness that, believe me, I've had darkness in my life, and a lot of it has to do with decisions that I've made in my life. I can share with somebody the darkness that I've come from. I can share with them how God brought his light even into my life, an insignificant person like me, and I can share the third thing about his favor in my life. God is walking with me. He has a higher plane for me to walk in, if I will just walk in it. So if you're ever like the guy in the song, right? Remember the guy with the black and white pictures? And in each section, he talked about him and whether it was his brother, his co-fighter in World War II, or his lovely wife in all those black and white pictures. The one thing he said in each thing was, or one of the things was, if it looks like we were scared, because according to the song, he was scared in every situation. You should have seen it in color. The color didn't just paint good stuff. We were really scared is what he's saying in the song. We didn't know what was going to happen. And we get that place in life, right? Maybe some of you are there right now. And if you're in that place, or if there was a picture of you taken today, 
and somebody could look at the look in your eye in the picture, something ain't right with Donnie in that picture. Mm -hmm. If you're in that place right now, I realize these are very obvious illustrations. God is there for you. Amen. God is there for you. Amen. The guy in the song, of course, comes through every situation as a winner. And it ended up making him stronger. I know God in color. I want you to say that with me right now. I know, I know God, God in color. color. Now, if you just lied when you said that, <laughs> let's make it true. Let's make it true. I want to get in that relationship. When I met Patty, I was overwhelmed. You saw the picture earlier. That does not do her justice. And she's just as pretty today. And I mean that from right here. And, but the first time I saw her, I uh, was overtaken by her. And, uh, but in my mind, I had no chance to be with Patty. Patty came into my life and it turned into this beautiful blessing. Why? Because of God's favor. I told you we did everything backwards. Maybe you're like that in your life. Maybe you've been imperfect in decisions that you've made. God's okay with that. He can make good out of less good. That's what he did with us. So I want to tell you this, get to know God in color. Get close to him. How do you do that? You read his word. Now I know we live in a time of prophets and apostles and everybody else, and that's okay. I think those things are biblical on a certain level. But the way we really get to know God is to open his word and let him speak his light into our life.